This is a new Cartoni Redlock tripod. The Cinema 5D Virtual Show is brought to you by B&H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Tilta, arm your camera. Blackmagic Design, creating amazing solutions for film, post-production and television. And Fomex, devoted to remarkable light. Today it is my pleasure to welcome Elisabetta Cartoni live from Rome uh, to talk about their new Redlock tripod. Elisabetta, how are you? I'm good, thanks God. Uh, we are locked as well, but in good health and uh, with a lot of energy and uh, we can't wait to be allowed to, uh, to, to go back to the, to the factory again and keep on working. You are in a part of Italy which is not as affected, I believe, right? Yes, we are lucky somehow because in Rome we only have like a couple of thousand cases, but the north is really very, very affected and this is very sad. Well, we're, we're trying to make, you know, lemonade out of the lemon we've all been handed. So that's why we try to do the same we would do at NEB uh, virtually. And this is why I asked you for this interview and thanks for taking the time. Um, so you introduced the Redlock tripod series recently and actually you sent us a model to test already, uh, which is great, of course, so we can uh, show really nice images from it. What can you tell me about it? This is, um, you know, we were, we were um, looking for something that could be appealing for uh, the market uh, because our heads are extremely um, professional and have a lot of features that are really top of the line, but some, uh, somehow the market uh, don't perceive um, this advantage. Uh, because uh, there is like a prejudice that Cartoni is an expensive piece of equipment. So uh, we tried to make a, a big effort in uh, packaging a, a unit, a system that would be cost effective uh, for uh, um, uh, the customers, but still preserving all the top features uh, that we have in the professional heads. And we did that both on the tripod and on the heads. The heads are uh, based on our uh, focus line. So we have the focus eight, the focus 10 and the focus 12 uh, that have been um, redesigned, uh, not in the uh, outside part, but there are some improvements in the mechanics. Um, the most important improvement that we had on, uh, on uh, the Redlock series of the Focus uh, 8, uh, 10 and 12 is the quality of the fluid. Uh, we were um, pushing a research on, uh, on the silicon fluid from, for the Focus 22 actually, which has uh, been a very popular head for uh, uh, ENG and SP. And we have um, partnered with a um, uh, company uh, which were uh, who was working for aerospace and uh, actually um, uh, a special fluid that they were developing for the um, plane shock absorbers uh, they gave us samples to test and uh, we found that it was an excellent uh, uh, new technology for our heads. So uh, now in the new Redlock Focus series, you have this new fluid. Of course, this fluid is a lot more expensive. You, and the proportion will be that it is 10 times more expensive than the normal silicon fluid that we were uh, using. But the difference uh, makes it worse. So we decided to uh, apply that new uh, technology to all of our heads. So that is what we have um, in, the, in the heads. Then uh, the tripod itself has a new design um, because we have uh, restudied all the details from the locks, from the sliding mechanism, from the positive uh, stops when when you are uh, uh, closing one of the of the levers um, we have rethought the um, um, uh, rubber feet which were uh, not as precise and stable with our 
um, previous series. Uh, these are made on new design, which uh, somehow uh, reverses uh, the coupling of uh, the foot itself and the hook but still uh, gives you the possibility of using a floor spreader if you wish or a uh, dolly. Um, top um, ball where, uh, which will receive the head, uh, we decided to keep a very uh, solid uh, ball that we were using on uh, our series of Focus, uh, Focus 12 and um, uh, we designed two types of um, rings that, that will uh, make very easy to pass from the 75 millimeter uh, ball to the 100 millimeter ball uh, and but just but keeping the same solid very um, uh, special in the torsional uh, rigidity, which is a good, uh, and it is an aluminium, not a uh, composite uh, base. That's amazing, because I think that's a big advantage to have one tripod that you can use with 100 and also 75 millimeter heads, because that's something that, you know, up until a few years ago was simply not possible. I mean, I, I have a couple, 75 millimeter tripods uh, that I was not able to use with my head. You know how it is. And now uh, to have this possibility to, to change in between makes a lot of difference, I think. Yes, and, and, and especially because this is really uh, something which is smart and doesn't cost much. Because what we will do is that we will offer as a gift the, the, the other ring uh, for people. Let's say if you, buy, um, if you buy a Focus 8, which is a 75 millimeter, we will offer a 100 millimeter ring in case you have a bigger head in the future or uh, the reverse. So, our, uh, so the, only the Focus 8 is 75, the 10 and the 12 are 100? Yes, exactly. Okay, perfect. Uh, the 100 is, um, let's say, it seems um, strange, uh, but this difference of 2.5 uh, centimeters in diameter is a big deal uh, for stability. So if you're using packages uh, that, are, that have a long lens or a battery pack or a light on top or a microphone, uh, you should try to be uh, 100, 100 mil instead of 75. Uh, this is something that, you know, out of experience, uh, uh, we have found out. One thing you mentioned in the very beginning, you talked long about the, the new fluid that you're using. And honestly, I mean, I've been using your tripod for the last three or four weeks, I think, uh, on many shoots, also with bigger cameras, even FS7, FX9. And... I, I, I realized that I was surprised how, how smooth it was. I had a lot of shoots where um, I had to do macro shots, you know, very with a 100 millimeter macro. And from my experience, at least, all the other tripods that I have used in the same price range were not as precise. And now that you explain it, it makes sense. Because for me, um, you know, this, this little thing you talked about when you actually start panning and when you start the movement, there is in some other inexpensive tripods, you will see the difference that in the beginning, there's a little bit of a, you have to move it a little bit in order for the, the resistance to actually uh, come in, right? And that's a problem. Yeah, I know. That's a problem. Absolutely. And I didn't, I didn't notice this at all with yours. I know, absolutely. And, uh, but it took a while to, to, to um, understand that the difference was there and it, it was making it, better for the user. So uh, we decided that uh, we will put it standard um, for all of our heads with new fluid. Uh, yeah, very, very, very interesting. Uh, what I also loved about the head is, you know, like, you know, there are other companies uh, that have steps in their resistance. Um, and I feel like, I mean, there are very, very small steps. You don't have numbers here. Um, it's sometimes a real problem when you change a lens on the camera and when it changes, uh, you know, I can't always rebalance immediately if, it's, if, if I have to act really fast. So sometimes you use the drag or the resistance to, you know, counteract that. And I think with, with the small steps that you have, I found it quite easy uh, to adjust uh, very quickly. Um, and yeah, and I don't have to have to put in these big steps that you have to do with some other companies. 
uh, which is sometimes you realize that actually you would need something in between two steps to be perfectly balanced. And that's, I think, not the case here. Sure, the, this was the principle when, when my father first uh, designed the head, is to get the, the, the continuous counterbalance and the continuous uh, fluid would be an advantage because it allows you to change the settings even on, even on uh, when you are shooting without having to stop and reset. So you can intervene very easily without having any sensation on the image. This is an interview with you, but it's also almost, I'm, I'm sharing my impressions because I've used it already. So it's already half a review, I would say. <laughs> but um, uh, one thing that I was concerned about, to be honest, when I saw it for the first time was this little lever because it looks, it looks as if it's not very, you know, it's not doing much uh, or if it's flimsy. But honestly, I was surprised how well it locks. Uh, because it's very, it's very, very sturdy, you know, like it's absolutely, it's absolutely locked. And the second thing that I, I loved even more is this quick release system that you have here, because I found quick release systems to be problematic uh, on many other tripods, uh, because sometimes they, you know, they just get loose and stuff like, and stuff like this. But this is very, very secure the way it's done. I hope we can show it here. It's very straightforward. You know, like it immediately flips up here and it's it's just big enough to grab. It's very, very easy in everyday life, even if you have a bigger camera on this tripod and you can definitely put a bigger camera on this head, uh, like an FS7, FX9 or C500 Mark II. Um, I find this to be exactly the right size, to be honest. Thank you you know, for mentioning that because uh, the locking levers are uh, a big issue when you are uh, designing a head. Uh, the locking levers, um, you have to get to a compromise for the, the right length because you want people to be um, easy access them, but you don't want them too long because they can be on your way and, and be a source of accident. Or if you leave it open, uh, if, you, uh, if it takes a hit, they could break. And uh, so this is always, um, uh, there are ratio that you have to study. It is the positiveness uh, of, the, of the clamp and the length uh, of the lever you are operating. And another feature that is uh, top important is that uh, all the levers, the brakes uh, or uh, the quick release uh, or all the adjustments uh, uh, in the cartoony head, uh, they, you can adjust them. Because um, when you buy the head, the head is uh, pretty tight because it just comes out from, uh, from the hands uh, of the guy who has been assembling it. But after some time, it could take some play uh, because of uh, the uh, materials adjusting uh, between themselves. But all our um, locking systems can be adjusted by screws. Um, the, 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 the possibility of adjusting and readjusting will ensure the good grip at all times if you won't have a loose uh, system. The same concept is using the legs uh, uh, where the coupling with the ball or with the tension of the red locks uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the legs, they are all uh, uh, possible to adjust. I used it and I, I wasn't aware of the price of the tripod, to be honest. And then I checked on your website um, and I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised that, uh, you know, like for the, for the price, what you get is not something that I think would have been possible in the market only a few years ago because there was always a lot of compromise you had to make with tripods if you spent this amount of money. Um, talking about pricing, can you tell me the rough pricing of the three models? Roughly, you are under a thousand euros for the Focus 8 system, a thousand two hundred for the Focus 10 and 1,450 uh, 1, for the Focus 12. That's the, the full red lock system with the head? Yes, head and, and tribal. Difficult times to, to uh, launch a new product, I'm sure, but I, you know, you're, we're all in the same boat and I think all, all manufacturers have this problem right now. Yes, that's true. And uh, hoping for better times, we will have more time to be uh, at home and to be studying uh, new uh, ways of, uh, you know, enhancing the technologies and thinking new tools, maybe 
getting a little more time uh, to think it over, it would be beneficial for everybody. Thank you, Elisabetta. That's nice words to end this on. And thanks everybody for watching. Stay home and stay safe and stay tuned to cinema5d.com. Even though you're locked at home like us, probably, uh, we will do our best to give you more interviews about new products like this nice one with Elisabetta Cartoni. And uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. <laughs>